Hi there and welcome back. It's Lisa from Critters and Ink Designs in Ontario, Canada. Today we're going to case the catalog. And um, if you're not familiar with, with what case means, it's copy and share everything. The Penguin Place stamp set uh, and little, it's not a bundle anymore because it's returning, but you can get the, the stamp set and the punch uh, together. You won't get the 10% off because it's not a new bundle, but um, it's just so cute and it carried over from last year and I just love it. So today we're going to do these three cards. So this is for the more uh, beginner type stamper. If you're, you know, if you find some of the more elaborate cards intimidating, you know, you don't have to go big. You can still just enjoy and create and make it your own. And then secondly, you know, you add a little bit more. And then for the avid quilter, avid quilter, I've got quilting on my brain. For the avid stamper, you've got um, like a more, much more elaborate. And we're going to do all three. And you can find your comfort zone in here, uh, you know, and figure out whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or an avid stamper. So let's get going. But first, I want to just share a couple of things that came in the mail yesterday. Um, Stampin' Up! has been bringing out some branded merchandise and this hat arrived uh, yesterday, no, two days ago, a couple days ago, and oh my gosh, look at how cute it is. I can't wait until it's cold enough to wear it. And they've also come out with this plaid little mug. Now, I love mugs. I have all kinds of mugs. And then you might know from previous, I'm just going to close it so I don't drop my water all over everything. Um, the in color colored thermal tumblers and they're they're in the five different in colors and I've got a couple of different ones of these and they keep my ice I drink a lot of water and I put ice in it and it'll keep my ice cold even overnight there will still be ice in it in the morning if I haven't uh, drained it out um, when I go to bed so these are available on my online store at crittersandink.com and uh, there are, anybody can order them. Uh, and I don't know how long they're going to be available. So if they, you know, tickle your fancy, you might want to not leave it too long. But the branded merchandise is in there. And there's also sweatshirts and a couple of other things. So check it out. All right. So to get started, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I create my penguins. So I've done a couple and I've punched out a bunch of them, but I'm going to show you actually how I do that. So here's my punch and here's my stamp set. And I've already set up my stamp apparatus with my um, little penguin, this little guy. He's already set up in there. Now, you don't have to do it this way, but I typically do more than one card at a time. So for me to pre-punch a bunch and then stamp them is an easier way for me to go. So I'm just going to flip this over. I never waste paper. If it doesn't stamp properly, just flip it over, you know. So i got to flip this over and just, sh whoops. I'll do it this way. No, you know what? I'm going to grab a new one. <laughs> I'll use that for sentiments or something. So I'm just going to grab a new one. Put it this way. Is that going to work? All right. So let me take my little penguin. And I'm going to place it where I want it to sit. Now, the reason I'm putting it upside down in this corner is because I want to just punch it out. Uh... And it's going to be the easiest to punch it out in this lower corner like this. Otherwise, you know, if I have it in this corner, I'm going to be wasting all this paper. And I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to, when I, when I stamp it out, I'm just going to put it in the lower left corner. And whenever you do multiple things like this, figure out the easiest spot or the more logical spot where to put it. All right, so I'm going to place my pumpkin, my pumpkin, good grief, my a penguin. Speaking of pumpkins, today is the last day to order the Spooky Treats um, paper pumpkin for September. And they, they actually start billing and shipping. Uh, well, they won't do it tomorrow because it's Sunday, but they will start 
um, billing and shipping on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. So today is the last day. The purchase is always, it always ends on the 10th of the month. And then they start processing on the 11th. And the new one coming up for October. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. We've just had a sneak peek. They won't show us anything until the actual um, month when it gets closer to the reveal uh, time after the selling period for the next month. But uh, we did get a sneak peek in the demonstrator site. This morning I saw it and uh, it looks adorable. Okay, so I just inked up my little penguin with the basic gray and I'm going to just hold it for a second. I'm not gonna squish the daylights out of it. You don't need to do that. And he looks pretty good, but I'm gonna give him a little bit more ink. There. So now I'm going to take my punch and I'm going to center my penguin in there. So I've got him pretty centered there. I like how he's sitting. There, and I'm just gonna punch him out. So next, I'm gonna pop this back in. And I've previously just used some scraps that I had and punched out a bunch of penguins. And you can keep these in your um, stamp box until you need a penguin or you can pre pre-print them, pre-ink them. So now I'm just going to, I'm gonna leave my little pumpkin, pumpkin, good Lord, I'm gonna leave my penguin where he is. And I think I'll flip him over here. Yep, that fits better. And I'll ink him up. And I'm using the basic gray, but you can use um, the black if you want to, memento black. But the gray comes out really pretty. I'm gonna pop him back in. His one little wing there didn't color that great. There. So you can just keep doing this. And one side will fit better than the other. So just make sure it nestles right in there so that when you go to repeat, print it if you have to. I don't know why I keep saying print. If you have to keep re-inking it, um, you know it's going to be uh, right on top of the previous stamp. I don't know why I can't talk today. Good God. Okay. So I'm just going to do a few. I only need three to show you what I'm going to show you today, but we'll just do a couple just so that you get the drift. And um, if I'm doing multiple cards and they have a punch out or um, a greeting label or something, I t this is how I typically do it. I'll make a little template. And if I, you know, if you have to re-stamp it, if your stamp didn't come out as dark or as clear as you'd like it, just pop it back in there, re-ink it, and away you go. Okay, so there's our little penguins. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside for now. We don't need it right at the moment. So to make the first card, which is this one, I'm using Pool Party. So let me grab a card base in Pool Party. And it's five and a half by eight and a half and I've scored it at four and a quarter. And this is going to be the card base that I use for all three of the cards. So this is our first one. And then for the top layer, I'm going to use a piece of pool party that is three and three quarters by five. Okay, and then I'm going to take the little stars And the pool party ink. Oops, my phone just fell. And the pool party ink. And I'm just going to make kind of a little background around where the penguin is going to sit. 
You can do the whole sheet if you want. It's totally up to you. I don't feel like I need to. I just kind of want that little halo-y thing there. That's probably good enough. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. I'm just going to center that right on top of my card base and then I'm going to take one of my little penguins oh he needs feet so I need to take a scrap of so saffron and I'm going to punch out a couple of little tootsies there there's one and two Maybe I'll cut out a bunch because we're going to need them. That should do us for a while. All right. So I'm going to take my little penguin and glue some little feet on him. Guys are so cute. Oops. Okay, and then I need a little beak. I'm just gonna grab this little stamp with some so saffron ink. And it's nice that these are the photopolymer, you can see through them. So I'm just going to line up the edge of his beak with the little part that comes down. And there's our little guy. So cute. And I'm going to pop him up on dimensionals as well. What did I do with my dimensionals? Here we are. go so that's our first card oh no I forgot this okay so we need a greeting so I'm going to use the other side of the little block and that scrap that I had earlier and I'm going to take the pool party ink again I seem very disorganized today I just popping all over the place and I'm going to take Oh, that one says happy birthday. Uh, I wanted season's greetings. There, season's greetings. So I'm just going to pop that in the corner. And just, I'm just going to quickly give that a little cut. And you know what? If it's not perfect, it's handmade. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, there's no point in stressing about it. It's, it's handmade, and that's the beauty 
of it. I have a, a customer who's always worried about it not being perfect. Well, it isn't perfect. It's not made by robots or, you know, anything like that. So don't even worry about it. And there we go. So that's our first card. It's so simple. And then on the inside, we can take one of the bigger greetings. I'll just move my little tootsies over there. We can take one of the bigger greetings. Uh, let's see, what will we say? Be cool, be chill, be merry. That's so cute. And I'm just going to take this again. And let's put a few little snowflakes on there. There. All right, I'll just pop that right in there. So there's card number one is done. Isn't that cute? So now for card number two, we're gonna step it up just a little bit. And in the catalog, they used the, the Subtle Collection 6x6 six six designer series paper. And I thought, well, I have this Lights a Glow paper, which I really love. And so I thought I'd make one in the lights of glow. Uh, this paper is beautiful. It comes with pre-stamped little sentiment areas that you can use in all the different colors and it's double-sided. So one side is uh, go like embossed with metallic and the other side is just flat colors. I don't know what you call that, flat I guess. Um, so this one has the little gold snowflakes and then like a bow. Bo what do you call it? Boho? Boha? Per Boha dots? Bo I forget what you call them. Boca dots? Anyway, whatever they are. Those are the dots. And um, oh, these ones are all the same. This is the one that I used on this other card. I love this. It's so pretty. Then there's one with all Christmas trees on it on one side and the Boha dots. Boca dots. I must look that up. I don't know what they're called, but the dots are there. And then there's this one is very pretty with the swags. And then you have the multicolored little stars and the stripes. And then again, we have the frame in the pool party. And this creamy, I guess it's very vanilla with gold snowflakes on it. And then the arced stars is very pretty. Uh, what else? I showed you that one. And then there's this one with, I don't know, you could say it's almost like tree branches. But it's beautiful. And then it's got little stars and things on the back. And that is, what color is that? Evening Evergreen. So this one isn't pool party. I said it was pool party, but it's actually soft succulent. But I used it with the pool party paper and it looked beautiful. So there's that one. And then there's a black and gray um, metallic stars. And then the gold stars on just plain black with the dots on the back. So there's so much you can do with these. I, I just, I've had these for a while and I actually just cracked them open the other day and thought, oh my goodness, I gotta use these, they're beautiful. So that's why I put this on the pool party. And while it is soft succulent, it looks great. I just love it. But today I'm going to use the, if we're casing the catalog, I'll use the, um, the Subtles uh, Designer Series paper in the pool party. 
Okay, so let's move this over here. So again, I'm going to use a pool party card base and it's cut at eight and a half by five and a half and scored on the long side at four and a quarter, which is your typical uh, card base. So then this is going to sit on here and then we're going to take a piece of basic white and I'm going to use the layering diorama dies to create this little ice flow that the penguin is sitting on. So I think I used the second smallest on that. Or the smallest, let's see. Yeah, no, I used the second smallest of these diorama dies. So let me grab my cut and emboss machine. So to use the dies, you're going to use your base plate. Number two is your cutting um, shim. And then two layers of three, which is your cutting plates. So I'm just going to lay this on here. And actually, I might as well cut two out at the same time because I'm going to need a second one for our next card. So. So there's one. I'm just going to cut out a second one while I'm here. Okay, so while this card is a little bit more involved than the first one, it's still pretty simple. So what I need for this is some real red ink. And I'm just going to grab another block here. I don't know if this is too small, we'll see. Nope, that will work just fine. So, I'm going to take the real red and another one of our penguins. And I'm going to, now you can use any color for your scarf that you like. I just happen to like real red. And I'm just going to stamp his scarf on him and his little beak. So, I need my So Saffron ink again. See what I'm doing here. Okay, and now we need our little tootsies. Probably zoom in a little bit here. I'm just putting two little dots of glue there. So here's one little foot. My second little foot. And there is our penguin. So I'm just going to glue this directly to the uh, designer series paper. Again, we're keeping it sort of simple.
and that's how he's going to look. So I'm going to glue this directly to the card front. And again, I've cut the designer series paper at three and three quarters by five. And I'm going to put our little penguin up on dimensionals. So cute. And for our sentiment, I'm going to use a little piece of scrap. And I'm going to use the same greeting that I used before. And this time I'm going to do it in red, the real red. And again, I'm just going to trim it out. And I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals as well. So don't forget to use the skeleton of your dimensionals because that's, that's also dimensional, right? You just cut it around. Don't waste anything. And then I'm going to use the adhesive back seasonal sequins and they're in the June to July holiday catalog, the mini. And um, they're so pretty. There's gold and like a pearlescent one and then like a reddish uh, sequin. Okay, so I'm going to pop a few dimensionals, or not dimensional, sequins around our little guy here. Typically I put three, but let's put five today. Let's be a rebel. And there we go. So for the inside, we can do similar to what we did before. Um, let's see. We can still use Be Cool, Be Merry. So let's find our pool party ink. Helps if it's right side up. And... It's a little crooked. Is it crooked? No, it's actually not crooked. Okay, good. Oops, I'm going to use this. Again, I'm going to put some snowflakes on the card. And we're going to glue that on the inside. And there's our card. So that's card number two. And here it is with the Lights Aglow designer series paper. And this is with the Subtles designer series paper. So cute. Okay, so for now, card number three is this one. So you can see this one is ramped up quite a bit. And this is for the more avid uh, stamper. So for that, again, we need uh, our card base, which is eight and a half by five and a half, and scored at four and a quarter. And I'm just going to burnish my score line here. And then I'm going to take another piece of the designer series paper, and I'm going to center it right on my card. Now, what I did for this one is I actually well, we could do that too. 
I actually used Versamark and white embossing powder and just used the little snowflakes to create a little background at the back. So why don't we do that? I'll do that instead of this. So I have another piece of designers or of the um, pool party cardstock. And this is five and a quarter by four. So I'm gonna cut it down to three and three quarters by five, just so that when we put the next layer on top, it's not sticking out. Three and three quarters by five. So it's going to be just a little bit smaller than our top layer. So I've got my Versamark ink and my white embossing powder. I'm gonna zoom out a bit here. Ooh, the sun is coming into my window. It's a good thing I'm almost finished. So I've got my embossing buddy here, and this is like a little talcum little pouch. It's a little powder puff thing. And I'm just going to put that on the whole piece of this uh, cardstock because if you have any oils on your fingers or there's any static, it will actually uh, grab the embossing powder and stick to places that you don't want it to stick. So I'm just going to take my chamois here and give my snowflakes a little wash because I had used them with the pool party before. So I might as well clean all of these while I'm at it. There. So here are my little snowflakes. And I'm just going to put them all over the place. I have to re-ink my Versamark. It's not really dark, but so what Versamark is, it's like a clear ink that stays sticky for quite a while. So you can use it to do tone-on-tone -tone stamping like this if you don't have the matching ink and let it really dry. Or most popular, it's used for embossing with embossing ink. Sorry, embossing powders, not ink. There, so I've got that inked up, and I'm going to take my white embossing powder, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it all over. And be generous with it, because whatever you don't use goes back in the tray, and then you just put it in the jar. There's nothing wasted. I can see here, I have a little bit of embossing powder that I don't want there, so I'm just gonna. And you know what, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter, it's gonna be covered, but just know that you can remove it before you heat emboss. And then this just all travels down into this little dish, and then you just Pour it back into the little jar. And it comes with a brush. So if you find that your embossing powders are sticking a little bit to your tray, just give it a little sweep with the brush that comes with it. There, just pop it back in. And I'm just going to clean this tiny bit and there you have it such a handy little um, tray and this is available in hmm, I forgot which catalog it's in it's in the uh, July to December mini catalog on page 83 and it's $37 and you get this tray the embossing powders are sold separately. You get the tray, this brush, the embossing buddy, and a pair of tweezers with a ceramic. Uh, and let's see if I can find them. So with the, they have like a ceramic tip on them. 
so craft craft um, tweezers okay so now I'm going to take my heat tool and pardon the noise there perfect okay so next this is going to get glued right onto our card base so I'm just going to plunk that right in the middle there and I'm going to take another piece of the pool party which is four by five and a quarter and I'm going to take one of the larger um, diorama layered dioramas and I think this is the fourth one from the biggest so the fourth one down and I'm just gonna lay that on there so let me I'll be right back I'm just gonna cut it out all right so I just centered it you know fairly fairly uh, even on the on the sides and I'm gonna save this I can use this for uh, another project I gotta hurry up here because the sun is starting to <laughs> see if I can move over a little bit. There, how's that? A little bit, not bad. Okay, so I'll hurry up here. Ooh, losing my little feet. Okay, so there we have our cut. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to actually run this through uh, the wintry 3D embossing folder. It's got little snowflakes on it. I'm just going to zoom out a bit. There, okay. So I should have just brought my cut and emboss machine over in the first place. Let me grab it. Okay. So when you're using a 3D embossing folder, you're not going to use anything but your, your number one base plate and your number four gray embossing shim, okay? So I'm going to place this embossing folder over half of my piece of uh, cardstock and I'm going to run it through and the reason I didn't emboss it and then cut it is because if I was to run it through again it would squash my snowflakes so you cut it first and do the embossing second I learned that one the hard way so I'm just going to run this through And then I'm going to just shift the paper here a little bit. And I'm, I'm putting it so that I get like what I kind of want. So I'm going to put that snowflake there. And... There, so I'm going to run it through like this. So again, I'm just using my base plate and my gray embossing shim. And I'm just going to run that through. Oops, my phone just fell. All right, so we're done with this. I can put this away. And there, my whole sheet is embossed. Isn't that cute? So now I'm going to put the Snowfall Accents Puff Paint onto my, around my diorama cutout. I'm just gonna give it a really good shake. Okay, and I'm just going to just run it around the edge. Now this puff paint, you just slide it on like this and try not to get any bubbles. Just 
kind of add a little bit up here. All right, and then I'm going to take my heat tool and this is going to all puff up. Okay, let me zoom in so you can see. So cool. All right. Okay, so this part is done. Here's our card base. So now, let me zoom back out. Oof, the sun is really moving. Okay, so I'm going to put this layer on dimensionals. I'm gonna let this cool because I don't wanna squash my snow here. You know what, maybe I'll put the dimensionals on here. Is that gonna work? Yep. So we'll put the dimensionals on here so that I don't have to worry about damaging my snow. Okay, we're gonna pop that right on there. It doesn't matter which side is up or not up. There. And then previously we had cut out, oh look, see I have to move my, my dimensional here. I'm going to take a picture. I'm just going to pick it out and move it over. There you go. Okay, fix that. So this is the piece that we had cut out previously for the when we cut out the two for the last card. And I'm going to quickly run this through the same embossing folder that um, we just used on the base here. So give me two seconds. So I was just thinking I should show you both the Wintry 3D uh, embossing folders is a set of two. One of them is the Snowflakes. And the other one is, uh, let's see if I put some paper in there, if you can see it better. It's pine, it's like pine boughs. Isn't that pretty? So we just used the snowflake one for today and I'm going to put this, I'm just going to glue this right in here. I was going to put it on dimensionals, but you don't want too much volume if you're going to be mailing cards because, if I could put it this way, because, uh, you know, then your shipping costs get kind of silly. Okay. So now I'm gonna take one of my little fellows here, my little penguin, and I'm gonna put his feet on. So two little glue dots. You can use glue dots too, but I like my liquid glue. So I've got my one little footy. Two little footies. And on a piece of scrap, which I have over here, I'm going to stamp his scarf. Got some embossing powder on there. So there's his little scarf. And I'm going to do a little hat as well. There's this little beanie. And I'm just going to fussy cut those really quick.
I don't mind fussy cutting. I find it kind of therapeutic. Oh, I forgot his beak. I'll do his little beak. Here we go. So we need our So Saffron ink. Okay, we're done with that. And we'll just glue his scarf on to him. So, you know, in the, in the previous one, we just stamped his scarf right on him. But when you cut it out and layer it like this, it just gives a tiny bit of dimension. And, and it just seems to step it up a little bit. Now, if you don't like fussy cutting, you know, go ahead and, and just stamp the scarf on. But I just find it makes a huge difference in, you know, if you give that little extra dimension. There's this little hat. And I'm going to take a Wink of Stella. So Wink of Stella is like a little alcohol-based glitter pen. And I'm just going to put a little bit of Wink of Stella on his scarf. Now because it is alcohol, it is going to pick up the color of the ink that you stamped with a little bit. So make sure that you clean your your tip, see how it transfers the color? I don't know if you can see that, but and I'm just going to put a little bit on his hat too. I love Wink of, wink of Stella. I Winkify probably on almost every card that I do, if not every card, 80 or 90% of them. There, just make sure I got all the red ink off of there. And I'm going to let him dry for half a second, and then I'm going to pop him up on dimensionals into his little spot. Oh, he's so cute. There. Now for the sentiment this time, I'm going to use a piece of a real red. So for the for the sentiment on this one, I'm going to use the white embossing powder again. I'm going to take my embossing buddy. Now this is going to make it look faded. But afterwards, just um, just wipe off the powder once you've got it heat embossed and that powder will disappear. So I'm just gonna use the Versamark. I'm going to use the same sentiment that I used before. And I have a little bit of embossing powder on my paper here from last time. So I'm just gonna give that a clean so that I'm not transferring it. And I'm gonna stamp it up well with the Versamark, the clear ink. Sorry about the glare. It's a good thing I'm almost finished. This time of the year, the sun just seems to move so quickly. Gosh. Okay, and some white embossing powder. Okay, I'll clean that up after. 
screw my heat tool here. Perfect. And again, I'm going to just use my snips. And this time I'm going to just cut it a little bit on an angle just for some interest. And I'm going to use a little piece of this iridescent trim that's in the holiday catalog. It's a little bit kind of feels kind of roughish, but it's cute as anything. So I just need a piece, I don't know, about maybe four inches long, maybe five. How long is that? Four and a half. And I'm going to just kind of loop it over on itself. And I'm going to stick it in the corner here on a, on a dimensional. And I'm going to maybe try and go around it a little bit. Just like that. And then I'm going to take my little greeting and I'm just going to pop it onto the dimensional. There. Okay, so we don't need that. And I'm going to take my green sequins again and just pop a few sequins on here. Let's do five this time. Put one over here. Oh, I'll take a, I'll take a little one. There. So there's the outside of our card. So cute. Now, if you wanted to, um, you could use the. What did I do with them here? The pearlized enamel effects, little bottles to make his eyeballs or to even enhance his scarf and um, toque. Well, maybe I'll put a little dot on his toque where the pom-pom is. And then that'll just dry as a as like an enamel dot. There, I don't know if you can see that. I just put a little enamel dot using the red of the pearlized enamel effects, which are also in the holiday catalog. Now these take a little bit of time to dry, so I'm going to be really careful um, and not do the inside of the card until later. I was gonna do the inside of the card the same as the other ones that we just did basically the same as this. So um, because I don't want to damage my little pearlized dot there, I'm just going to leave that. So these are the three cards that we cased from the July to December uh, mini catalog. And just to let you know, you know, there's so much inspiration in the catalogs. And if you look around on Pinterest or Instagram, there's so much inspiration. And uh, I, so I just thought I'd show you, you know, how to make your basic card for a beginner stamper, a more intermediate level, and you can use um, designer series paper, you can make your own paper with stamping, and then the more um, advanced for the more avid stamper. We made this one there. So I hope you've enjoyed these. Sorry for the glare. Uh, note to self, start a little bit earlier or do it in the afternoon. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me. I've really enjoyed sharing my time with you. Bye for now.